Yeah. New, 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 new. Okay, we've got these purple Please. cases that were, um, we bought a bunch for the last Ada box uh, and we're, we have some left over because we always purchase extra in case we need them. Um, this is an adorable little case. It's purple, a blink of purple, but it's also good. It'll hold um, microcontroller boards, cables, sensors, what have you. Um, it has a little pocket in it. If you're getting a memento camera, of course, it fits exactly in there and a little bit of a little pocket so you can store like a SD card or um, charging cable, but that uh, can be used for other projects as well. Next up. Um, some more clearance. So these are, you're like, whoa, these are familiar. It's a blast from the past. These are original Raspberry Pi 1 cables for the GPIO header, which was 2 by 13 pins. And we bought a lot of these cables because we were selling a lot of Pi 1s. But then it turned out that the Pi 2 and the Pi 1B Plus came out and it used a 2 by 20 connector. Um, so uh, now we can't use these 2 by 13s. So um, we have a lot and they're super cheap. So if you want some ribbon cable that's six inches long, if you happen to have a project that uses 26 pin IDC, you are in luck. You can get 10 of these for a buck. And uh, it's basically like free wire. Go for it. All right, next up, new product from Raspberry Pi. Yay! Um, the M2, how we've got the Raspberry Pi um, under plates from Pimeroni, and I think a couple other M2 options are going to the duo from them as well. Uh, but if you want the official version of the M2 hat from Raspberry Pi, this is it. Uh, it's designed specifically by Raspberry Pi, so you know it's going to like pass all the um, speed tests that they've run. It comes with a little cable that plugs in on the other side and it can uh, hold up to tw 22 by 42 millimeter PCI Express cards. So good for adding storage or like AI accelerators or cellular modules or what have you. Um, yeah, we'll have these in the shop real soon. And they're, they're, they just came in, so we're gonna get them all ready. Okay, next up. Um, we had a revision for the 2.9 e-ink tricolor, and as people have been watching, all of our displays have been updated to use iSpy connectors to ease, because you see here all this wiring, there's a lot of wires, maybe you don't want so many wires. Well, um, you can still get this beautiful 2.9 inch e-ink display with uh, white, black, or red pixels, but this time, I'm just going to skip ahead. On the back, uh, first off, it's now native for black, but you also have this iSpy connector, 18 pin FPC, which means that you can uh, plug it into um, any of our boards that have iSpy connectors on the other end, like the Pico Bell Tripler, uh, or we also have a Cutie Pie BFF, or we have a little breakout board. So it just makes wiring, and if you want to mount it far away from where the red controller is, it's going to be a lot easier. You don't have to trace long wires out. Alrighty, next up. Okay, um, next up, this was a special request from Brent in the Adafruit IO team. Uh, he really wanted to do some wiring with the DS18B20s, and he's like, I hate like tracing all these wires out, and I want them to be far away. And uh, if only we had a little adapter extender thingy. And I was like, okay, well, like this, because he's like, I want to chain them together. Um, so I made him a little chaining extender, <laughs> but it doesn't have a, I don't have a better name for it other than extending chaining breakout, whatever. So, um, what's nice about this is you can use it with your DS18B20s. It doesn't have any like active circuitry on it. All it does is it make your wiring easier. So let's go to the overhead and I can show it off. So here I've got the prototype versions, which are green, but you, I think you guys are cool with that. Um, so you can just, uh, use the terminal blocks to connect up a... TO92 DS18B20, or if you uh, have a cabled version uh, like this, you can just uh, plug the cables in um, and screw them in. So ground, signal, and power. And then um, each one of them has a JST3PH connector like this. You can chain them together uh, just by using these connectors and we have them just uh, with bare ends as well. So you can plug them in or extend them even more if you like. It's just, you know, an easy uh, solid connector. And then um, you can plug it in. And then I've just got a one wire example running in CircuitPython here. And then, you know, if I uh, click it in my mouth, it should get warmer. Unless it just froze because I, there you go. It? I booped it, but there you go. Okay. It's going up a little bit, 28 instead of 26 degrees. 
Let me reset it. It's actually kind of hard to reheat these um, metal body ones because they're so... Uh, there you go, 32 degrees. Okay, so, um, you know, you can read from, from one wires. One thing that you can do, um, although the CircuitPython library didn't support as well, is you can remove the power line um, and have it, if you delay one second between starting a read and getting the data, uh, you can capac uh, sorry, parasitically power the um, sensor, but the CircuitPython library actually works best if you if you power it with all three lines. Um, each one of these has a 4.7K pull-up, which is kind of the requirement for one wire. You can cut the trace. If you have more than 10 of them, I'd cut the trace, but otherwise it's no big deal to have the extra load. And then this is a little buffer that will buffer the signal line uh, to the LED. So you can see when we're reading from the one wire because you see the LED turn on, but that this doesn't load down the um, signal pin. So um, will this be handy for some people? Yes. Is it, you know, e just as easy to maybe wire it up yourself without having this adapter? Maybe, but uh, I did this as a favor and maybe you would benefit from that favor. So if you want to do some quick DS18B20 wiring, um, this might be a helpful tool. Okay, and the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, our customers, the entire world who makes open source possible, here is the star. Dun, dun, dun. It's the Pixel Trinky, which is why the code is Pixel T today. Um, the Pixel Trinky is uh, yet another Trinky. I've been designing a lot of Trinkies because I have a lot of SAMD21 chips. Uh, what's funny is um, today actually we found out back in 2021 or 22 we bought 50,000 RP2040 chips and as of this week we finally got through them so you know we all ordered like two years worth of inventory in 2022 or 2021 and you know now now we're done so uh likewise trying to get rid of these sam g21s so what this is is a um usb a port plug that connects into your laptop and on board is a SAMD21 microcontroller. It has 256K of flash, 32K of RAM. So it runs Arduino wonderfully. CircuitPython, it's a little minimal, but if it's only driving pixels, it can actually do quite a bit. Um, there's a 3.3 volt regulator, a reset button, a little NeoPixel just for signal, and most importantly, a terminal block output. Um, and you see, uh, oh, can you go back? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a great, great photo. Uh, thanks to Ogun, our photographer. The four port terminal block uses screw terminal. So you just use a screwdriver. Top pin is ground negative, then data D, clock C, and five volt plus. And what this lets you do is quickly wire up um, NeoPixel or dot star LEDs. The dot stars use both pins. The NeoPixels use just the data line, where you could have two NeoPixel strands, one on the data line and one take data from the clock line. And you don't have to do any like powering or wiring. And as long as you're driving less than like, you know, 150 pixels or 60 bright pixels, um, you can actually just power it from the USB port, which will give you about an amp. Here I'm using a USB to C adapter for the, the MacBook. And you can use Arduino, you can use CircuitPython. We might um, write a couple quick apps for um, using Windows 11 has dynamic lighting hid definition so like the operating system itself can control neopixels or dot stars but basically it's like if you want a really quick way of just you plug it in you don't have a separate wiring thing you don't have to like solder or join any cables um for most you know neopixel strands you get um you'll just get the wires on the end you could just cut and strip or you know plug directly into the ends of the wire um, and you can see here, like we have a little wire adapter. We recommend you just plug it in and then you, um, you screw it into the, uh, terminal blocks like so, and then, you know, no solder led wiring up and it's very compact too. So you can just have it plugged into your computer. And then, you know, we might, um, we visit like the Ada light project, which did like dynamic lighting based yeah. on a movie or whatever you're watching. Um, you know, instead of just like, it's basically the same as having an Arduino, but it's just very compact and inexpensive and ready to go. And it comes with a demo that immediately starts lighting up whatever pixel is connected. So you know it's working. That's a good idea. And if you want to, because people are like, oh, what if I want to drive more than one amp worth of pixels? Just disconnect the five volt line, use an external power supply and share the ground line. So you don't have to use the five volt power. 
Um, but uh, if you want for small pixel strands, you can do it. And then of course the data and clock lines are level shifted. So um, it'll drive even the most finickiest of pixels. Let's do